Hello everybody, uh, welcome back. This time around I'm actually going to be demonstrating with the A4 stamp set, the Enjoy the Journey. And there's lots of fabulous elements on this. And this can be male, female, journal pages, scrapbook pages. But this time I'm going to work in a larger format. Uh, the stamps are a really good size and we've got a lovely selection of sentiments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the demo on a small piece and then go to the bigger piece that I'm actually going to be working on because I've actually done some prep. So what you need to do is you can either gesso your tag before or afterwards when you've applied the texture paste. So you can either gesso now and then apply the texture paste or apply the texture paste and then gesso. It makes no difference. But for the purpose of the demo, I'm just going to show you the first steps on a sample tag, just so you can see what I've done before I move to the next piece. So what you do is you apply your texture paste randomly over your tag, like so. And you sort of want to make sure that you're leaving some gaps. You're not covering that whole area. Just trying to get my lid onto my texture paste. Just wipe that palette knife just to make sure that nothing sticks. Now what you need to make sure is that you've got gaps. Can you see that you've got gaps around your tag that it, it sort of gives some open areas. So you then dry that. I won't dry the whole thing. It's just so you can see the process before we move on to the, the bigger surface. So this is the process. You literally apply the texture paste in a random fashion and then you give that a dry. Don't apply it too thickly and if you're drying texture paste, dry it, allow it to rest so it doesn't bubble and then dry a little bit more. But if you, if you dry it too intensely then you're going to get bubbles. That's perfect if you want that kind of texture. So what I'm going to do then is apply texture paste through this lovely stencil designed by Olga and it gives wonderful detail but it can also be used for masculine or feminine and that's what I like it's for a mixture of both you could apply male or fem male or female projects which is what I love it can be for a mixture of both now with the texture paste I'm just applying it randomly I'm not going for a pristine perfect image I'm just going for some of those areas and I don't keep wiping over the stencil just so that I don't, the, the texture paste doesn't seep under the stencil. So if I don't mess with that too much, you get a beautiful, look at that for detail, absolutely beautiful texture with that stencil. Absolutely gorgeous. I love that. So I'll leave that on one side to dry because I've done one earlier, you'll be pleased to know. Just give that stencil a wipe because what you could do is you could place this stencil on a piece of white card while it's got that texture paste on and just wipe over it onto a piece of card and then you've got another background which works perfectly. So I'm just reaching for my bigger substrate and as you can see here I've done exactly the same technique but I've done it on a bigger substrate. In fact it's a huge substrate. It's a huge tag, which you may not be able to see in the whole of the picture, but you get the idea. It's a very large tag. If I sort of place it on its side, you can see that it's an enormous, enormous tag. So I'm working on a larger substrate and I'm doing that because I want to show that the stamps aren't just suitable just for cards you can use them on big substrates as well larger substrates so what I've done is I've applied the texture paste like we did in the first steps and I've painted over the texture with gesso and vintage photo distress paint but obviously you didn't want to watch me just paint over that with vintage photo distress paint so I did this before I went live and I just need to give that a little bit more of a dry just to save a little bit of time that's the reason I did it off camera because everybody will know how to paint the paint will apply the paint to the substrate so I'm just giving that a dry because with distress paints they've got a good open time they're quite fluid so you need to give them a good dry so what I'm going to do then 
as I'm going to take vintage photo distress paint. Just undo my lid and then I'm going to apply this vintage photo distress paint to my substrate. Just make sure I've got a baby wipe, just a couple of baby wipes at hand. And then what you're going to do is quickly go over the substrate with the paint. And you're not aiming for perfection here, you're aiming for some coverage. You're just aiming for some coverage. So just apply that over your substrate. I know you might not be able to see the whole substrate, but you won't be missing anything. I'm just a painting over the whole area with that darker layer of paint, which looks a bit mucky at the moment, but trust me, it does get better. It does get better. And then what you do, let's just move that out of the way. You give that a slight dry. You give that a little dry. So dry it with the heat tool, but you're not drying it completely. You're not drying it completely. You're just wafting over with the heat tool. You're just wafting over that with the heat tool, just to take a little bit of the moisture from the paint, just taking a little bit, you're not drying it completely. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take a baby wipe and then you're going to wipe over your substrate and wipe some of that paint back. And this is where you get a lovely vintage feel. So keep moving your wipe around and then you'll get a lovely vintage feel to your substrate. Just keep wiping around. And when your wipe gets a little bit too mucky, then it's time to get another wipe. So just keep wiping over that. And you can take your time with this. It's one of those processes that is really therapeutic. It's really therapeutic just to keep wiping over and just lightening some of those areas. But can you see that amazing texture? I'm sorry that I'm actually wobbling that. It's just put, keeping it in my hands so that you could see it a little bit. So just keep wiping over and you get some amazing, amazing texture. Absolutely fantastic texture. And if you want to take more colour out in certain areas, just go back to a cleaner baby wipe and just wipe over. If you don't want to use a baby wipe, you can just use a damp cloth, which obviously you'll have to clean thoroughly afterwards. But I just think that that darker brown colour really highlights the texture. It highlights it beautifully. And you can use firm pressure and light pressure to get the paint so that the paint sticks in the inulations. It's just fab, just a fabulous textural piece. I just love that. And then what you can do is give it another dry. I'm hoping you can see that okay on camera that you can see all that amazing texture and the texture from Olga's stencil as well is just fantastic. But where that palette knife is scraped and scratched, the surface of that tag is fantastic. So I've got some scrapes and it just looks, it looks lovely. It's nice to make some masculine things as well, just for, just for a change. And then say you've missed a little bit of an area here where it's a bit too light, just take your wipe that's got all that paint on it and just dab some back in. So it works perfectly. You get nice mucky hands as well. So just give that a nice dry so that the paint is completely dry. But you've got a wonderful textural surface and it proves that obviously you can work on a large format as well. You don't have to work on small formats. But again, if you want to work on a small format, the stamps work beautifully for both, both scales of project. And that's what I love about the stamps. They work on all scales. Just wipe my hands a little bit because it it's just looks terrible, but I can't get over the texture in that. I just think the texture is fantastic. So we'll just move that out of the way just for a moment. And then what we need to do is take some white card some white card, just make sure those paints, the lids, the lids are on because I'm bound to tip them upside down. And what we've got now is we've got the lovely suitcase stamp, fabulous suitcase stamp. And we're just going to ink that stamp up. Make sure you give it a good inking. 
as with all the stamps, it's making sure you give them all a good inking. I, to be honest, it doesn't matter what size the stamp is. I always say the same thing, that if you give a good inking, then you save time later for any mistakes. Half the time we make mistakes because we're in so much of a rush to ink the stamp. So I've just inked the stamp. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp that. Let's put it on its side because it's easier to handle then. And I'm just going to stamp the suitcase. I haven't inked the numbers very well because it's actually the suitcase that I want. So lift, lift your acrylic block just so that you make sure that you get that central area here. Just so that you don't miss that central area. So just give a nice, you know, reasonable pressure on your stamp and then lift a little bit more and there we go we get a beautiful image a beautiful image and what we need now is a piece of scrap paper just so that we can just so that we can blot that stamped image so if we blot the stamped image just to make sure that excess ink is removed that just removes the excess ink and then what we can do is just cut this out which won't take too long I have cut some out beforehand but we can just cut this out nice and quickly there's some things that you can prep but there's others that you need to just sort of show how easily the stamps cut out And I just chuck everything on the floor as normal. I do that every single time. And then it looks just horrendous behind me. It's a good job the camera isn't panning behind me. So what you can do then is you need to age that a bit. So just give that a little dry, just to make sure that ink is completely dry. Because you, you're using a VersaFine Claire which has got a really good open time, so give that a dry. And then what you want to do is crumple. Just break down those fibres and crumple your suitcase up. Crumple it up. Break down those fibres in that card. And then you need to apply Vintage Photo Distress Ink. Distress Oxide Ink. So apply the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide Ink directly to your card and then you just need to spritz with water and that will age the suitcase beautifully I've got one that I've done earlier so we can move that out the way and what you need to do then is place your card so I had two of these suitcases which were done in the same way and then what you need to do is place a piece of paper over the top and then iron it because then you can iron it flat and then you get a lovely suitcase that's nicely aged so I love doing that technique we'll just dry this area a little bit just so we've not got so much much moisture just underneath us so we move those suitcases out the way and what I did was I did exactly the same technique with a blank piece of card, I scrunched it up, aged it with vintage photo, ironed it, but look what you get when you iron. When you iron the piece of paper, you, with, you also get this piece as well that you could use in your project. So I placed that over my card, ironed it, and then you also get that, which is also a lovely background for the suitcase. The suitcase would look lovely on that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my substrate. So this is my substrate, like so. And then I may even use some of this. So tear, tear this piece of white card, white paper. So this is just copier paper where I ironed off the excess. I ironed off the excess ink. So just dump that on the floor. And then what I'm thinking is, you see, you can have some of that lightness underneath your card. And we'll have this here, like so. So it just brings some lightness to the design, just so that it's not too dark. 
you don't want it too dark. So what I'm thinking is, I'm going to have this envelope here as well. That's it, that's perfect. I often talk to myself just to decide how I'm going to have things. So let's just tear a bit of this paper, just so it looks a little bit more aged, a little bit more aged. You don't want it to look too perfect. You want it to look a bit crumpled. It just looks more aged then. And then we can adhere this to our substrate. I like adding layers because it just offers lots of different textures to your design. It gives lots of layers and it means that it's a really tactile piece. I love the fact that it's tactile. So we just apply that to our substrate and then I've machine stitched these pieces which I absolutely love because that machine stitching also gives another texture. So we'll just apply some adhesive and we'll keep all those threads. We're going to leave all those threads from that machine stitching because it just adds to the texture. And then just wrap them round like so and then apply this to your substrate. I just love the fact, and you want to keep some of these ends up. Don't sort of stick them down because you want it to look a bit aged and grungy. So you want it to look aged and grungy. And then if we look at the suitcase stamp, let's just take it off the acrylic block. If you take it off the acrylic block, you can see there's some numbers here on the stamp set, which also are useful in their own right. So what I'm going to do, move that adhesive out of the way, we're going to use gathered twigs. Gathered twigs distress oxide and just ink some of those numbers, just ink some of those numbers. Let me just move the thread out the way and just stamp those numbers randomly. Oh, look at that, you see. I just love little touches like that. So don't just think you can use the stamp as a whole. You can use the stamp part of the images. So as you can see here, if I just stamp some of that substrate, look how you get random numbers in the background. I just love how you get those random numbers here. Just love it. But then that's what makes me happy when, when I'm creating a project from any stamped images really. If there's lots of scope and lots of detail, it inspires me to add lots of layers and that's what I love. I love adding layers and I think it's not until you create a project that it actually comes to life. I love how they come to life. I just love those numbers. We may cover some of them up but that doesn't matter. We see we're going to end up covering that up so then you can judge where you want to stamp. I want to add some whiteness back in so if we add this here let's add some more numbers back in. This project is developing because with anything that I create, I end up going off on a tangent. So sometimes I don't always know exactly where I'm going with the project. Because sometimes inspiration takes me in a different tangent. So I'm just adding those numbers and you can do second generation stamping as well. It doesn't have to be first generation every single time. So what I'm thinking is we add this envelope here and we add the suitcase here. You see, I love the, the stark whiteness against that brown. So I'm just going to adhere that. Let's just keep those threads so we've got some lovely threads visible. And I'm just going to adhere my envelope just to give it some lightness and brightness. Just because we say that we're creating a grungy project or we're creating a mixed media project doesn't mean that it doesn't it's not you can't have some brightness or lightness to the project you know it doesn't have to be dull and un uninteresting just because you're using browns you can still bring some lightness into that so i'm just going to add some of those numbers to my envelope and then add this here like so and I think do I want it at a slight angle or do I want it you see this is where I end up messing and then what I've got is I've got the feather from the same stamp set 
So I was thinking the feather would go, go underneath to give an added texture. So the feather would go underneath. And as you can see, I'm not making everything brown. I'm, I'm bringing some lightness to the design. So I'm just playing around with that just to decide where I want that feather. You see, do I want it? See, I don't want it over the top because that hides some of the detail on the case. So let's add the feather to the back of the suitcase. And you get all these images on that A4 stamp. And this is just one project. You can create so many projects from that one stamp set. It's just amazing. But that's why I like to give lots of detail in a stamp set. You see, I love that. Love that. So then we can add our suitcase. And if you want to give it some lift, then you can use a heavy body gel or you can use your foam mounts if you want to lift it a little bit. I want my all my layers and textures to sort of be bent and textural and aged, not sort of perfect. I don't want them perfect. And then we can add more textures to these, more textures. You see, we can add this paper clip. I just love, it just reminds me, you know, your office stationery, you can add all that kind of thing. If you think outside the box, just think of all the different elements you can use. So I'm going to colour this paper clip with some alcohol ink. So I'm just going to colour with some alcohol ink. And I've got another embellishment as well that I may as well colour at the same time. Just lift that up and colour that paper clip with some of the alcohol ink just to tone down that brightness a little bit just so that it goes it, you know it coordinates with our project so we're just toning down that silver a little bit and then it just works a little bit better with the project it still peeks through but it's not quite as in your face in the silver so what I'll do is I will probably, I can paint this afterwards, you don't need to see me paint the circle, but I will add this circular piece as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this paper clip over the sentiment journey, which I think works really well. So we'll just add that paper clip like so. And obviously I need to allow these pieces to dry flat. So it is difficult to hold it up. So just apply that over the word journey, which I love. And the adhesive will dry clear, so don't worry about that. It will dry clear. And what we can do is we can add this little bulldog clip here at the top. So we can add the bulldog clip at the top. I just love that touch as well. So we'll just hold that in place for a few moments. Just bring the project down so you can see what I'm doing and you can see all the details. So just add that to our project. And your adhesive will dry clear. So you don't need to worry about your adhesive. So that will dry clear. And then what we can do is we're bringing the stamp set. Let's just move this out of the way just for a few moments. And let's bring in the stamp set. So what you've got here is you've got different sentiments. So if I get one of my um, border acrylic blocks for the sentiments, and what you can see is that you've got so many sentiments that you can use. You've got memories, live life to the full, enjoy the journey, discover, explore, moments, capture every moment and dream. I just think the sentiments are fantastic. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Explore. So let's just move this out of the way. And we've got the sentiment, well, the text, Explore. So just place that here. And then I'm going to use a piece of calico because I think that calico texture will work beautifully with the other vintage elements. I think it'll work really nicely. So we're just going to stamp the Explore. And these stamps just stamp beautifully on fabric. So I'm just using VersaFine Claire. You could use VersaCraft, but I'm just using VersaFine Claire because it's not as if I'm going to put this in the wash. And then I'm just going to bring my project in 
being my project and don't forget when you finish this project go around all the edges to make sure that your project is nicely finished off and this is where I end up playing around with my textures so I want to make that a little bit smaller make that a bit smaller I love calico because that's got textures as well so if you can see it's sort of building it round here just so that it keeps the eye drawn to this area here so I'm just going to add that explore you see this is one of those projects I could work on continually I could just keep adding bits to it it's one of them projects that develops you see and we'll keep that texture in from the thread and I think we can actually add another little uh, text as well so let's pick another one of the sentiments because I think they'd work really well so just move the explore out and I think we'll use discover discover so I'm just going to add this again to my acrylic block nice large sentiment to go with the larger images which work beautifully again bring in my calico sorry I've just nudged the camera like you do when you're live so just going to ink my stamp with the VersaFine Clair and then stamp again onto the calico lovely typewriter font which works beautifully as well with the imagery again just cut that down a little bit just tear it to give me added textures, to give me those threads. And there's something about calico. It's just so appealing, especially when you're doing projects like this that are quite tactile, that are really tactile. So I'll then add discover. Will I add discover here? Just hidden. You see, I love that. I love it. I just love all the layers. There's just something about layered elements and I do tend to play around. Sometimes I'll take a picture. You see, it would also look nice there. Sometimes I take a picture and decide where I'm going to lay my, you know, where I'm going to add my layers. I'll sometimes take a photograph just so I can decide where it looks most appealing to my eye. Obviously, everybody's got a different eye and they, they look at things differently. But for me... I love it there. I absolutely love it. We've got thread everywhere. Now I'll add some white splatters because no project of Tracy's is complete without a touch of white splatters. Just to lighten that a little bit. Just to give it some life. Sometimes white. It depends what project you do. Sometimes it's black, sometimes it's white that will give life to that project. But this is one of those projects that you could keep adding to for instance you would add this circular piece at the top you would add this circular piece and some twine and then things like little little paper clips I won't linger on this project too long now but what you can do is you could add little details like let's add a paper clip to this envelope just so it coordinates with everything this is one of them projects that I get addicted to. We will leave it there, but off camera, I will add more to that project. I will paint this brown here to match the background. I'll add some rustic twine and I still may add little bits, but hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can do on a bigger scale project. It doesn't have to be small scale. And just to show you that your stamps and stencils combine beautifully but just with a little bit of layering, it really does add to that design. So I hope you enjoyed the demo and I'll see you again shortly. Bye.